slides will just actually wait. No, that yeah. um, This is our group. Uh, we are the Surface Waves Project, and we'll get into discussing what that is uh, here in the next slide, but let's do introductions. Uh, I'm Jason Irvin from Olathe Northwest. I'm Ryan Alvarez, also from Olathe Northwest. And I'm Hannah Gibson from Bishop Seabury. Okay, so uh, we know about neutrinos. Neutrinos are uh, a small particle that doesn't like to re react with mass very often, but when it does, it uh, deposits a little bit of energy, which is something we're trying to study. Uh, this creates a small radio shower, uh, like shower of radio waves. Uh, now, um, they dissipate really quickly, so that's a problem sometimes. Uh, we can't find them in time. So one of the projects that we're, that, uh, we're allowed to work on is um, Sometimes waves will get caught in between surfaces. Like the wave is being produced and it will kind of hit random materials because that's just in their way. It could hit, uh, like let's say it's at the Arctic, it hits the ice and then it kind of travels through the ice and then it hits the air, or uh, travels through the air. It travels at different rates. So uh, naturally in solid objects, it's most likely going to dissipate faster. But there's a kind of halfway point and that's what we're trying to study. There's a point where the wave gets caught in a two-dimensional plane between the air and the ice, or between the air and the other surface. So, our purpose is to find every possibility having to do with these waves. That's, what, that's all we're wanting to do. Now, we're, we have sand to use, and we have a variety of, of equipment that's really, really impressive. Uh, but that's, that's our purpose. We're using sand and uh, trying to find what gives the best output and input for these surface waves. Okay, so once we get the waves, we have to save them. This is our process here, uh, which actually became interesting. Then when we get the waveforms, we have to, uh, like I tried opening it up and it just brought it up on uh, a kind of it's similar to Word documents, and it just came up like hashtags everywhere. So it was just it doesn't take that very well. So we have programs put in place for this uh, to get the numbers. Uh, anyway, so then it goes to Excel. Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, um, and uh, right here, I can let you take it away for that one. That's so, your baby. Um, we get from Octave. It gives us usable data that tells us the volts, and then uh, in Excel, I match it up with, uh, I uh, match up the volts and the uh, amount of meters that the antennas were away, and we'll, we'll show you a little setup of that. Um, but then we just get a lot of the data through there, and then we go to uh, the new plot, where we save, where we turn all the data into usable plots so that Jordan doesn't scream at us for having too much data, so <laughs> it was so we say like that's uh GNU plot just gives us some really nice picture graphs. Now all these all these photos by the way they aren't really containing anything serious that you guys need to know. We're not yeah. uh, expecting you to have the eyes of eagles here. But um it's just kind of a, a representation of what we're seeing when we're doing this. Go ahead for the GNU plot and read. Um well GNU, GNU plot was sort of the first way we had of plotting data, but then I started to learn root. And so instead of using the new plot to graph the waveforms like this one, we did them again in root, which makes some really, really nice graphs. And we did that for an entire test so that you could see the drop off of the amplitude over time. Well, over distance. Yeah. And so. This sort of shows how, like, what we were doing when we were getting our data. We had the sand pit, two antennas, and, and we just kind of varied the orientation and uh, distances. This is this is the crazy part. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We glitched out our picture pretty hardcore right now. But um, that antenna that's down there, it's supposed it's to be about right, right there. there. And uh, yeah, so uh, we we took the antennas and then we moved them different uh, different distances on the sand to uh, measure the different voltage at different distances. And then we even varied the angles too. And we did these distance tests, um, both on top of the sand, halfway buried in the sand, and up in the air, we 
of them, and, and we try to see if there's a difference between these different possessions. And so, uh, once we get the data, we put it through Octave, and then Octave can give us the vaults. And so, one thing that Excel does is it's really good at meshing, messing with a lot of data at once. And so, this is the decay in amplitude of millivolts versus centimeters. So then, to see what that uh, the what the amplitude is decreasing by, uh, if we change the x-axis to be uh, an exponent, so this one it was linearized at an exponent of negative one, then we know that uh, a normal a normal wave in three dimensions will uh, decay with an exponent of negative one, and if it's a surface wave, it'll decay at a uh, exponent of negative point five. So this is just an example of what we do. The only difference here is that uh, this graph is uh, the x-axis have changed. So you think that, that wave is a, a wave in three dimensions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that graph depicted. Oh, was, that, that's, um, that's a did lot we even thing. put those in? <laughs> I don't know. We, did not, we didn't hey, ignore this. Uh, ignore the red. We're good. It doesn't exist. Usually, All right. usually best to save it as a PDF before you present. PowerPoint likes to screw up a lot. Yeah. PDS will never change. Yeah. It was, it's a future work right there. Yeah. So that's yeah. another edition. <laughs> that's good. Slide that uh, yeah. But these are my root graphs. We're like 20 centimeters away. You can see it's much larger than that. 40 centimeters have really dropped off some 60. A little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit more like that. Um, and I have like 12 of these at each of our different. Um, stopping points in our distance. And then I took the voltage data from these, turned it into power, which is this scatter plot. And you can see how it the power decreased over distance. Yes. Okay, maybe I just missed. What is What are the graphs on the right? How are those? Are um, the these these the are the waveforms, just like we did in GNU plot when that, that is what we s saw on the oscilloscope and saved from the oscilloscope. Okay, so like the pulse. Yes. And you recorded the pulse on the oscilloscope. Yes. That's what we're seeing here. Okay. Yes. And then, so our results of all of our testing, uh, we didn't get a lot of surface waves. Um, so, I, <laughs> I say so as I said before, if there's an exponent of 0.5, then it's most likely a surface wave. And uh, and so all of these, there's like four different lines in there. But what we did, we just changed one variable at a time just to make sure that our data uh, was correct and that it wasn't, that it was uh, doing what it was supposed to be doing, like what we predicted it was to do. So um, there's different different instances where we took out the first two starting points, the first two endpoints, the, uh, the, we increased the sigma, and then there's just the normal, uh, the normal data. But what we found out that no matter what you did, it didn't change the exponent that made it uh, linearized, except for that one, but it's, that one was weird. Uh, but we, found a, we found a, a number of weird ones that uh, expanded our, our perspective of what's happening, it was cool. So then this graph down here, um, these are just, this is, these two trials are both in air, but with the antennas are different polarizations. So this one, this one, this line right here, uh, shows that it was going to be linearized at an <coughs> exponent of 0.5, while this one was around 1.1, 1 1.2. So. What is the y-axis on? The y-axis is uh, chi-squared, so that's the best fit for the exponent. Um, now, something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, we were, it was basically, we were, sh we were researching with a blunderbuss. We were trying every possible opportunity to find these surface waves. And so really the test that we were doing was a pretty good success. We were able to narrow it down from a very, very wide variety of combinations, uh, tedious variety, but uh, it, was, it was a good variety. And so now we're prepared for future testing now. So the future work, um, because of all the testing, we just said that make a repeatable strategy to find surface waves because this, we only had three graphs to show that contain surface waves. And then uh, we want to repeat the ways to find them. 
And uh, we also want to know the difference between uh, the vertical polarization and the horizontal polarization on the antennas, because we found out that even though there's a theory that said vertical polarization would probably yield the most surface waves, we found that it was the horizontal polarization on the antennas, which is just which way was the wire facing. So that's that we we found that pretty interesting for future work. And that is it. Any questions? Jordan? Yeah, I was. Uh, can you go back a couple of slides? To the high school uh, Yeah. Yeah, so the upper right and the lower right graph, those are the ones that, uh, like, it's kind of hard to see the exponent, but that's the negative in the ads, right? So, um, I think it's, well, you guys are being very humble, but, but, like, no one's ever found those before. So I think you guys get a lot of credit this summer for having actually found something that is brand new. Because uh, we've been trying for a long time, and that's the first time that anybody's actually performed that fit. So, um, you know, give yourselves a little bit more credit, you know, because uh, this is this is uh, something new and exciting. Are the different colors somehow different angles or something? Or They're, um, oh, I just told them to like uh, take out certain data points just in case the outliers are dragging down the exponent. But yeah, it, it, you know, no matter what we do, it seems like these particular results. And, and is the kite, is the minimum at, at 0.5? It's actually a little bit lower, it's about point, maybe a point 0.4 or point five. Four. The um, there's also how many how many degrees of freedom are there? How many distances? Uh, so um, when we go back and look at it, we it's uh, like two millivolts. So oh, I mean, how many um, how many like data points in the graph? Oh, um, we would usually usually about twelve. Twelve. Like 12 yeah. And then some longer ones. So yeah, because it's not like if you had taken two, then it could be totally random or something. But but in this case, it's a trend that fits to many yeah. points, right? So actually, yeah, these particular these two on the side I know are fourteen, and then that one's uh, twelve, I think. Also, you guys did find um, the correct exponent for air. You know, there, there are a number of tests yeah. we did. We just we were supposed to find one, and we actually found yeah. one. There's um. Yeah, so this one, these are the air ones. And so the only difference, they're the same distance off of the uh, ground in air, and then, but the, the difference is that they're different polarizations. And so the uh, vertical polarization had an exponent of about negative one, while the horizontal polarization had an exponent of about negative 0.4.5, which is really weird because nothing changed, nothing, just polarization, so, but. It was it was uh, pretty fascinating how um, we would do the exact same test except we took the antenna and we turned it 90 degrees and it changed a lot and that was uh, Stephen first or well I don't know who okay. first there. Um, so what was your experimental setup like where was the surface wave was it between sand and air in like how what, how was your antenna set up when you actually got these results at so um, these two right here, it was in the sand pit up on the sixth floor, and it was the surface was between the air and the sand. Okay. So and yeah, just the antenna like buried down in a room. Um, yeah. Were these the surface ones or the buried? These were the surface ones. ones. So yeah, they were so just they weren't buried. The it was just sitting on the sand. Okay. Good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then is, was the sand wet? No. Uh, in the <laughs> in the sand pit in the sand pit upstairs, the sand was uh, very very dry, which. Is what we were looking. It's what we were wanting because it wouldn't. Uh, the the wetness is a little bit more difficult to uh, to keep in a control form without controlling the uh, air humidity and things like that. Uh, now we had the opportunity to go in a larger scale testing, which was going to the volleyball pits, and that was a little bit. We we had to be careful when we were putting in the antennas uh, because. The first few inches were dry. Uh, the dry, the earth, no, I'm sorry. The dryness <laughs> that we were looking for, but the uh, wetness definitely did show up, and so that made some of the tests interesting. Yeah. So that was probably one of the reasons why we didn't get all that many surface waves. But it's I mean we did get three, so. Yeah. And it, it was it was a blunderbuss type of testing, uh, though. 
now we can actually use a rifle since we know exactly where they are. Uh, and that's an interesting analogy, I like it. But anyway, um, now we can actually narrow it down and we can decide what is more reliable in actually producing and recording these surface waves. And that's it. If there are no yeah, more questions. Yeah. No more questions?